I will set up my SQL multi-primary group replication using a set of three Ubuntu 22.04 servers. I will also cover the setup of Proxy SQL, but that will be on the next video. Proxy SQL will manage the failover and load balancing of connections to the MySQL cluster. First, we need to install the MySQL server package by running the app get command on all three servers. SSH to the MySQL one server and run the command. I will also run the same command on MySQL 2 and MySQL 3 to install MySQL server. Once MySQL is installed, I need to open up access to the ports 3306 and 33061 in the firewall by executing the UFW command. This command should be run on all MySQL servers. For the port 33061, I need to set more secure firewall rules by specifying the IP address of the MySQL servers, because this port will be used for the replication connection. For the purpose of this demonstration, I already listed the IPs in the hosts file. Now, I will allow the IP of MySQL 2 and MySQL 3 from the server 1. Then, I will allow the IP of MySQL 1 and MySQL 3 from the server 2. Going to server 3, I will allow the IPs of MySQL 1 and MySQL 2. Before creating the MySQL configuration for the group replication, I need to generate a UUID that I can use to identify the MySQL group that I'll be creating. To generate a valid UUID for the group, I'm going to use the UUID gen command and execute it on the server 1. I will copy the value of this output on a text file, since I will have to reference this in a moment when configuring a group name for the pool of MySQL servers. Now it's time to modify the MySQL's configuration file on each MySQL server. I will first modify the configuration of server 1. Here, I started a new section by including a MySQLD header. This section contains general settings required for group replication. Note that one important requirement for group replication in MySQL is that the data must be stored in the InnoDB storage engine. The MySQL documentation recommends explicitly disabling the use of other storage engines that could cause errors. The next section sets up shared settings for the group. You will have to customize this and then use the same settings on each of your nodes. Specifically, you must add the group's UUID which I created earlier in the previous step. A list of authorized group members, which is a list of all of your MySQL server IP addresses or host names, separated by commas. And the seed members to contact to obtain the initial data when joining the group. This setting should be almost the same as the allow list, but should append a designated group replication port to the end of each member. Next, this section configures a multi-primary group configuration. This allows any of the group members to perform writes to the database. The last section are settings that will be different on each of the servers. The server underscore ID directive must be set to a unique number. For the first member, I will set this to 1 and increment the number on each other host. For the bind address, I will set this to wildcard address so that the MySQL instance will listen to all of the server's network interface. For the report underscore host, I will set this to the server's hostname so that the MySQL instance will report its hostname correctly to other hosts. The loose group underscore replication underscore local underscore address should also be set to the server's hostname with the group replication port 33061. Before closing this file, I'm just going to copy the UUID that I generated earlier and apply it to this configuration. Now I'm going to copy this file to the other two servers, but I'm going to change the last three parameters, which are host specific settings.
Each of my server's MySQL configuration files now contains the directives required to bootstrap MySQL group replication. To apply the new settings, I need to restart the service on each of the servers with the systemctl command. Next step is I need to create a dedicated replication user on each MySQL instance in order for the servers to establish connections with the other servers in the replication group. To create a replication user, I need to log into the MySQL instance to start a session. I have to disable binary logging throughout the creation process because every server will have a replication user of their own. Otherwise, once replication begins, the group would attempt to propagate the replication user from the primary to the other servers creating a conflict with a replication user already in place. Now I can run the create user statement to create the replication user. This command will create a password and a user named repl. This command also specifies that the replication user must connect using SSL. Next, this command will grant the new user replication privileges on the server. Then apply the changes by running flush privileges. After that, I will re-enable binary logging. Next, set the replication channel named group underscore replication underscore recovery to use the new replication user and password. Now the replication user is set up, I can install the group replication plugin by running this command. Let me verify the plugin is active by running show plugins. We can see that the group underscore replication plugin at the bottom of the list. This means that the plugin is now active. Now I'm going to run the same exact commands on server 2 and server 3 to configure the replication user and enable the group replication plugin. Now that each MySQL server has a replication user configured and the group replication plugin enabled, I can now begin to bring up the replication group. To start up the group, I'm going to run bootstrap on server 1. Please take note, running bootstrap should only be done once. After bootstrapping group replication, I can set the group replication bootstrap group variable back to off. By now, the group is started with this server as the only member. I can verify that by checking the entries within the replication group members table in the performance schema database. Here we can see the member host MySQL1 and the online value for member state. This indicates that this node is fully operational within the group. Next. I can start group replication for server 2 and server 3. I don't need to bootstrap the group on this server since these servers will be joining a group that already has an active member. Now, let's check the membership list again on any of the three servers. In this case server 3. This time, there will be three servers listed in the output. All members should have a member state value of online. To test this setup, in multi-primary mode group replication, any member should be able to commit rights to the database. Let's test this by creating a database in server 3. Let's go to server 1 and verify if the database was created here. As you can see the database was created. Now let's create a table. Now let's verify in server 2 if the table was created. This confirms that replication is working in each direction and that each member is capable of performing right operations. That's all for now. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Thank you.